When I was a teenager, I was working on games with a friend. A lot of our projects failed, but we're still learning and we had high hopes. One day my friend shared with me a theory he had. It occurred to him that there are probably two types of people working on games. Some people are good at starting games, but not good at finishing them. And that's where the other type of people comes in. People who excel at finishing games, but don't know where to start. I reckon this conversation took place around 20 years ago. After all this time, I can confidently assure you that my friend was full of shit. I just said that for the funny punchline, I don't actually mean to be that cruel to my friend. On the contrary, even that early in his career, he precisely identified the biggest challenge of making games. However, his mistake was to assume that there was something wrong with him, that he was special. He assumed that there was a simple way for him to overcome this problem. That he just needed to team up with the right kind of person. A person who could finish all his games as effortlessly as he started them. Of course, these people do not exist. There are no game finishers out there. We are all game beginners. This video is going to be a bit different from my previous ones. Over the past year I've been finishing Porklike, the small Pico 8 roguelike I created in a previous tutorial series. I want to talk about the process I went through, discuss the struggles and challenges. I want to focus especially on the personal, emotional part, since this is rarely something we discuss in the industry. Even looking at my own channel, most of my videos are about how to overcome simple technical hurdles, how to make objects collide, how to save a high score table, things that will get you started. Perhaps I focused on these types of problems because they have simple and clean solutions. But in truth they are not the problems that will sink your entire game. There are no clean, simple solutions on how to finish a game, at least not universal ones. In fact, as I will discuss, the idea of a simple solution can be quite harmful. And so this video won't be really focused on solutions. Instead I want to retrace my steps. I want to tell you a story. I finished the tutorial series at the end of February 2019. The 7 day roguelike challenge would begin immediately afterwards and I was planning to participate. Of course I couldn't just submit my pork leg to the challenge. The rules are that you need to develop the game during the 7 days. But that's okay, I had a plan. I had an idea that would be a pretty radical departure from the tutorial and I wanted to work on that during the challenge. I used the working title Pork 7 and if I succeeded I could go back and finish the original pork leg. I would even end up with two games, Pork 7 and Pork Like. I started to work on Pork 7 on the 4th of March. The progress was steady but nowhere near the pace I needed to finish in 7 days. On March the 6th I didn't manage to work on it at all. And by the 8th of March it was clear that I would miss the 7 day deadline and it wasn't even close. I just silently dropped out of the race. I attribute this partly to a kind of creative burnout. By this time I've been focused on this game non-stop for 7 weeks. I completed the first version in just 2 weeks in January. I then spent the entire month of February to write the same game again from scratch and to record all of the videos. Don't get me wrong, I had a great time working on the tutorial. And to this day I am amazed how much better the code in the tutorial was when compared to my original version. But also I finished the game twice now, emotionally I was done. So throwing all this away and starting from scratch yet again was asking too much from myself. Also, my wife was pregnant and due early March. The baby could come any time during the challenge. My confidence that I would be able to finish wasn't strong to begin with. I wasn't too keen to commit myself to a project that could be doomed anyway. But I still wanted to see how my idea would pan out, so I continued to work on Park 7 at a leisurely pace. At the end of the tutorial I had some criticism. You can watch the whole video here but the main points went something like this. First, the items didn't have a strong impact on the game. Picking up an item wouldn't really change how you play the game. Second, the combat mechanics were one-sided. All you could really do is to attack the monsters. You were either strong enough to defeat them or you weren't and you would die. Third, some of the monsters were boring. There were just stronger versions of previous monsters. And finally, I just wanted to flesh out the theme some more. Pork 7 was supposed to address all of these issues by a radical departure. 
you would still go into a dungeon to get the treasure, but then you would need to go back out through the same dungeon carrying the treasure out. On your way out, a bunch of statues would come to life as powerful enemies. In order to even the odds, you could manipulate the levels. So you could move items to block passages, you could carve new passages, you could set up traps. The idea was that you would set up a kind of a heist. On your way in, you would prepare the levels for your eventual escape with the treasure going out. I removed the entire inventory system. Instead, you would carry the objects over your head like in Zelda. You could then either throw the objects or place them down again. This would give the player flexible tools to manipulate their environment. It also required some fundamental changes to the game's structure. The player's sprite needed to indicate which direction their character was facing. The entire map system needed to be expanded to include inert objects. Each map could now also pick up and carry other mobs. I basically started out with a blank Pico 8 project and built the game up from scratch for the third time. I used this opportunity to change the map system into a one-dimensional array like I described in my previous video. It was pretty scary throwing away all these systems. In my journal I kept writing down all these questions that popped up as I was trying to figure out what this game even was. I felt lost and dropping out of the 7 day roguelike challenge didn't really help, but there was also a kind of relief. In the following week I was able to pick up the pace again. Documenting my thought process helped me. I was able to concentrate on making one step at a time. On March the 13th I wrote, low motivation at the beginning of today's session, but I felt some real progress today. This was the last time I would be working on this game in the next three months. It is the 24th of June. In my journal I write, took a major break on this project due to Midori. The motivation is impossibly low at this point. It feels horrible to even think about working on this. This is it. This is the worst feeling you can have as a game developer. Returning to a stale project after such a long time. I have no idea what I was working on last. I feel unwell. My stomach is churning at the mere thought of working on this. I need to establish a reasonable goal for me. Main problem is that I tried some new mechanics and they aren't a game yet. There are two paths forward. One, continue with experiments hoping that there is a game here. Might be a huge waste of time. Also, when do I stop? Two, go back to original park like and just tweak enemies and items. Still some work, but at least that's working. My solution is to give myself a deadline. I give myself a budget of 30 hours to work on Pork 7. If I can't make it by then, I will return to the original design from the tutorial. 30 hours is just 5 days if I work 6 hours a day. In reality, it will take me over a month to get that much work done. The last session I do within this budget is on the 9th of August. As the parent of a newborn, I struggle to establish a working routine. For example, just 4 days after I make this plan, my wife has a seminar for an entire week. I need to take care of the baby during this week. The next time I get any work done is the 10th of July, but it would be unfair to use my family as an excuse. It's the lack of motivation that is the real problem. My mind refuses to occupy itself with the game, and it takes real energy to get myself thinking about the next step. And even if I succeed at forcing myself to work on a feature, I don't really believe it will get me anywhere. This faith that you figure it out as you go is what we mean when we say creativity. I need creative solutions now more than ever, and my heart is just not in it. I abandon the idea of the heist for now and focus on making the Zelda-style interactions with objects work. I can pick up objects and put them down. I can throw objects at enemies. A real breakthrough happens when I implement a push-back system similar to Into the Breach. Throwing an object at an enemy pushes them back a square. I realize my levels are too static, so on a whim I implement a feature where pushing an enemy into a wall breaks the wall and leaves a boulder behind. This is fun. So I also implement a spike trap. Pushing an enemy into the spike trap turns them into a piece of meat. You can then pick up the meat and throw it at other enemies, but you can also eat the meat to gain some health. 
Setting up traps for the enemies feels fun. So I reckon maybe that's where the game could be. I write down a bunch of throwable objects with different effects and implement them one by one. And hoping that at least some of the objects will lead to similar breakthroughs. I systematically test all of the objects and write down my observations. This would be the last thing I would do on the Pork 7 prototype. By the time I'm finished with this, I already know what to do next. I studied design. During my studies, my professors often pointed out that our brain isn't just working on a problem when we're consciously thinking about it. It also subconsciously churns away at them in the background when we are doing other things. Quite often solutions to problems come to us unexpectedly. You'd have an epiphany while brushing your teeth or doing the dishes. I didn't really appreciate this insight until after I graduated. If you understand how it works, you can even try to exploit it. But the question is just how to make your brain work on a problem in the first place. It is the 21st of July. I'm well into my 30 hour budget. The hard work is paying off. My motivation is slowly coming back. I'm still not at the kind of working schedule I had back in January. But my brain is clearly working on the problem. On that particular evening I go for a run. By the time I return I have two prototype ideas fully formed in my head. I write them down in my journal and I'm even excited trying them out on the next day. It feels good. The two ideas are two additional paths I can take after the 30 hours. One is a prototype I call Whip and Throw, the other one I call Sausages of Power. Whip and Throw is based on my experiments with the different throwable objects. Even before I tested all of the objects, the grappling hook turned out to be particularly fun. With this object you can basically teleport yourself to the next wall in any direction. This gives the game a certain dynamic I didn't even realize was missing. I notice one of the issues of the original Porklike is that the player is always only concerned with the objects nearby. They would only think about the objects in the room they are currently in. They would rarely consider the entire map. This is because of all of the abilities and powers are only affected by things nearby. The grappling hook opens the entire map. The player can zoom from room to room. They can escape the enemies, they can also jump into battle. There are hilarious moments where I would grapple into fog of war only to impale myself on spikes. I like this so I've come up with a variant of the game where the grappling hook would become a fundamental ability of the player. They can still pick up objects but they cannot place them anymore. Instead the second button would be reserved for a grappling hook. Sausages of Power is very different. During my playtesting I realized that one of the downsides of the inventory free Zelda style system is that you can only hold one object at any given time. This leads to a dynamic where you pick up something, throw it at an enemy and then run away to pick up something else. You can't really engage with the enemies because you can hardly carry anything into battle. In Sausages of Power I leave the Zelda system of Pork 7 behind and bring back the idea of the inventory. But I also keep it simple for now. The player has only two slots. They can switch between them like in Halo or Call of Duty, so there is no menu. Like in Halo, each item can be used in two different ways. There is a simple melee attack and a powerful ranged attack. With two items and two types of attacks, you would have four different strategic options at any given time. I cobbled together whip and throw in just a few days. It works reasonably well. The grappling hook feels a bit overpowered, so I'm considering introducing some kind of resource to limit its use. But the fact that you can pick up only one object leads to a similar combat dynamic as in Pork 7. So I move on to Sausages of Power for now. By this point is the beginning of August and I burned through my 30 hour budget. But I'm seeing progress and I have some motivation back. I want to see this prototype to the end before making my decision on how to proceed. Initial progress on Sausages of Power is slow. It's not easy to build it from the Pork 7 prototype. I need to throw away a lot of old systems. I'm hitting the token limit, but mainly because the underlying code was written with a different game in mind. I get there eventually. It's the 9th of August and I have a simple UI and a few simple items working. This is the last time I will be working on this project for the next two months. The next time I come back, I will be 9300 kilometers away.
This is not the longest break I have to take on this project, but it is the one where I feel the most estranged from it. The person who began working on this game is distant to me now. I am almost angry at them. I am in this foreign country desperately trying to build a new life. And here is this ghost from my past, unloading their unfinished mess at my feet. This should have been finished a lifetime ago and then some. The disparity is just unbearable. I feel hopeless. Our new daily schedule is erratic. I am taking more responsibility for the baby now. My wife's schedule often changes on short notice. It's difficult for me to carve out stretches of time when I can work undisturbed. If we are not traveling, I get to work on this maybe once or twice a week. I spend my days looking forward to the two or three hours when I finally get some stuff done. And yet, when I close the doors to my office behind me, all that awaits me is despair. Progress is slow. I take it step by step, I establish my to-do list, I go through the checkboxes one by one. I try not to think about the big picture, it just depresses me. By the end of October, all of the planned mechanics of Sausages of Power are implemented, but there is no relief. The prototype ends up underwhelming. The UI is confusing. Even after hours of development, I keep pressing the wrong buttons, accidentally triggering abilities. The different powers don't map neatly to the melee ranged paradigm. The ranged attacks were supposed to be expensive and mighty. The melee attacks were supposed to be cheap and simple. But I end up with ideas for ranged powers that are interesting but aren't powerful. Or melee attacks that don't play well with the current UI. I've been chipping away at this against all odds for over a month now. I desperately needed some kind of breakthrough. Time to take stock. Back in June I gave myself a budget of 30 hours to pursue different prototypes. The prototypes didn't work out, so I should go back to the original design. Except I've been playing the original every now and then, reminding me where I started this journey. With the added perspective, going back doesn't seem like such a great idea anymore. The prototypes might not be home runs, but they do put the original design into stark contrast. I can't go back, but there's also no clear way forward. I feel like lost in the middle of the sea with no land in sight. There is a great article by Derek Yu called Finishing a Game. It discusses a few of the challenges I describe in this video. It also proposes some pragmatic solutions. I like to show the article to my students. One thing that Derek emphasizes is how important it is to actually finish a game we are working on. When facing difficulties, you might find yourself in a situation where it seems to be easier to abandon the project and start a new one. Derek stresses out how important it is to keep going and avoid starting new projects at all costs. Every game goes through a difficult phase if you allow yourself to jump ship at those points. You will find yourself in a perpetual cycle of unfinished projects. Instead, Derek suggests to look at your project critically and identify the things that keep you from finishing it. Sometimes you need to confront yourself and throw away something that you've been holding on to. More often than not, we are the ones who are holding us back. During playtesting I had a few good strategic moments with Sausages of Power. Having four abilities at your disposal does work out well. It's the convoluted inventory management that gets in the way. I develop an idea for another prototype. It's closer to the original design, but it removes the equipment. It reduces the inventory space to the magic number of four slots. Every item you pick up simply represents a special ability. I go through my Sausages of Power abilities and pick the best ones. I call this new prototype Pork Slots. I juggle around additional ideas. Are the abilities you pick up like objects in your inventory or are they like cards you add to a deck, like in Slay the Spire? What if the abilities have suits and there is a poker meta mechanic happening? You can trigger bonus abilities if you assemble poker hands. Are the items one use only or can they be used multiple times? These are some of the things I need to figure out as I work on this next prototype. There is one problem now. The code base for Sausages of Power can be used with this new prototype. The code is barely holding together. It was created with a very different game in mind. So I will be rewriting this game from scratch for the fourth time now.
Not being able to finish this project is seriously affecting my mental well-being right now, so I establish a new rule to avoid falling behind once again. I try to work on this every day, even if it is just one line of code. And for most of the November I succeed. This is partly due to how the work has changed. Because I'm starting from scratch, it is just programming now and it has a very clear goal. I wrote most of the code before. I copy and paste a lot, I made adjustments based on what I learned. I'm laying down the foundations again and I'm making them even more efficient and clean this time. I'm sometimes even enjoying it again. There is a particular phenomenon that comes up in pretty much every long project. The webcomic series Meatly called it the idea fairy. As you're working through the long and tedious middle part of your project, your brain will tease you with ideas for new projects. Just as your motivation on a project is at its lowest point, idea fairies seem to offer a way out. It's so easy to convince yourself you can take a small break on a current project to pursue this new, more exciting idea. You can always come back, but of course you never come back, and the new project will turn stale too, prompting yet another idea fairy to whisk you away. Idea fairies are among the most savage project killers. They keep you trapped in that endless loop of unfinished projects Derek Yu warns about. As the unfinished projects pile on, it gets harder to see yourself as the kind of person that gets anything done. You might even convince yourself that there's something different about you. Maybe it's just that you are a game beginner, not a game finisher. I lost plenty of projects to idea fairies in the past, but it is not hard to build up resistance to them. That doesn't mean I'm immune, I just learned not to pursue them. So in August I'm thinking about making a version of the board game K2 in Pico 8. At the end of October, I want to make a sailing simulator in a post-global warming world. Now, at the end of November, it's shoot 'em up games. But this time the idea fairy never quite goes away. I maintain my daily routine for pork-like, but it's clearly not where my heart is anymore. December rolls in and it's another major setback. It begins with a week-long trip to Shenzhen, on which I fall off my daily schedule. When we return, I'm physically exhausted from the traveling and struggle to get back to work. I tell myself I will hold out until the upcoming Christmas break, where I expect to have a lot more free time. But as Christmas break begins, we get caught up in a seamlessly endless loop of Christmas activities. I'm frustrated and exhausted. I spent the final days of the decade binging out on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game I bought on the release day and also haven't finished after all those years. But in January I return to my rule with a vengeance. I will work on pork like every day. This time no matter what. I even draw a silly little contract in my journal. There is a good reason for it too. We're about to leave on yet another trip, this time to the Philippines. I managed to honor a contract even as I end up suffering from severe stomach flu although I'm not really sure how much that really helped. By the time we're back in China, I'm physically a wreck, but it's Chinese New Year and there are a few weeks of free time ahead. But then something strange happens. The coronavirus infection from the news keeps getting more and more serious. We contemplate leaving to Germany, if only for our baby daughter's safety. But after a grueling year of travels and interruptions, I can't stand the idea of packing my bags again and getting on yet another plane. While my wife takes our daughter to safety, we agree that I will stay back and wait the epidemic out here in China. At the beginning of a project, it's easy to maintain a schedule. It's your obsession. You think about it all the time. It's easy to fill any gap of your day to keep working on it. Every time you sit down, your head is spinning with new, fun things to try out. But after some time, your relationship with the project changes. Your mind is no longer coming up with ideas. You sit down to encounter a wall of resistance. As your relationship changes, so does your work schedule. You just can't get anything done in just a few minutes. You know you need a while to overcome the inertia, to finally get the ball rolling. You need a solid chunk of free time. You need to be rested. Everything needs to be perfect. You tell yourself that's why you are falling behind. It's all those damn interruptions. It's all those things that you need to fight in addition to working on your project. But then, once you get your perfect, free chunk of time, nothing actually changes. 
Instead of finally getting your work done, you'll just sit there paralyzed. A charitable interpretation is that there is something deep inside of you that has become paranoid and suspicious of free time. This thing needs a while to be convinced that it is not a trick, that this is the real deal we've been waiting for, that this is the time to start working to get emotionally invested again. The more cynical interpretation is that all of this has been yet another procrastination strategy. That all of this has been yet another excuse you tell yourself to avoid facing the unfinished project. It's a grift you've been running against your own success. Because there's something wrong with you. Because you are lazy. Because you are a fraud. It can be hard to tell which of the interpretations is true. Maybe it's a bit of both. But one of those interpretations puts you down on a path of toxic self-loathing that, when entertained, will just drag you down into the abyss. I keep trying to squeeze in some narrative flavor. The game is called Porklike and throughout this game developments I've kept trying to find ways of bringing some commentary about veganism. I like the idea that food made from animal products would look nightmarish from the perspective of a pig. I try to make the enemies into other domesticated animals. I like the idea that some abilities or items would be labeled vegan and experienced players could try to go for an extra difficult vegan run. Initially the items that trigger abilities are food. The bolt ability is throwing an egg. The spear ability is a kebab skewer. But now I have to take Derek Hughes advice. I finally have to admit that I've been sabotaging myself. The new enemies don't work well due to the low resolution. The stereotypical dungeon monsters work better. It makes no sense why food is triggering those abilities. It's hard to remember what food does what. All the potential narrative beats I keep fantasizing about are way outside of what the tokens allow. So instead I load up a few screenshots in Asprite and spend a few days drawing ideas. I don't pay attention to high concept plans, I concentrate on what I can possibly convey in the low resolution. I come up with a few ideas on how to make the dungeons more varied and interactive. I develop dungeon designs to make every ability useful in multiple ways. I use stereotypical monsters again, but with some interesting abilities. I implement those ideas one by one. On the 7th of February I do a successful playthrough of the entire game. It is only now that I finally have the confidence that I am on the right track. The relief is overwhelming. The rest is easy, I know how to do this. I draft a roadmap for the first playtest. I finish in a week. I begin playtesting. It is now 13 months since I began this project. And I finally have a game. I wish this was a video on how to stop being a game beginner and how to become a game finisher. Here is one weird trick. The creative world is full of weird tricks and they aren't necessarily bad. I tried a lot and I kept a few. I keep a bullet journal which has been instrumental in piecing together the history of this game. I'm using a Pomodoro clock to get started on a difficult day. I'm using various browser plugins to avoid procrastination. Blocking YouTube recommendations was particularly great. But the idea of weird tricks itself is rooted in a harmful assumption. That the reason why you can't finish your thing is because there is something wrong with you. That you are broken inside and that you need to be fixed with a cure. If this is really the case, why is every creative person broken in exactly the same way? Why are writers, musicians and filmmakers struggling with the same problems? Why are there only game beginners and no game finishers out there? Instead I want to simply retell the story of how I struggled for a year with this hard project. I'm not showing you this so we can all learn how to fix ourselves. I'm showing this to whoever needs to know. So you know that I know how hard it is. So that you know that you are not alone in this struggle. That there is nothing wrong with you. We are all game beginners.
Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you don't mind this sudden change of mood. Uh, this was obviously something that was important to me, something that I needed to get out. Don't worry, I'm fine. I will be back with, uh, you know, the regular content very soon. In fact, Pico 8 0.2 just came out and I'm really eager to dig into it. So yeah, see you soon.